Hello, this is Dr. Juwad. Please subscribe to my channel for more up-to-date videos. And thanks for watching. Hello everyone, this is Dr. Juwad. Uh, in this short video, I'm gonna talk about a common condition that I deal with with a lot of my patients, and it's low vitamin D levels, okay? Vitamin D deficiency. Now, the, what's unique about vitamin D, it's not necessarily a vitamin, it's actually a pro-hormone, which makes our hormones in our body. So if you have low, low vitamin D levels in your system, this is where you're gonna get sick. This is where you're gonna get decreased bone absorption. This is where you're gonna get an immune response. This is where you're gonna get depression because again, those hormones are necessary to help our body maintain uh, a level of homeostasis. So the main, one of the functions of vitamin D3, it increases calcium absorption by 20 times in the blood. So even though you're taking uh, sufficient amounts of calcium in, if you're low in vitamin D3 levels, this is where you're opening yourself up for decreased bone density. Females, osteoporosis, osteopenia. Okay, or what's gonna happen is that you have increased calcium absorption in, in elsewhere parts of the body. So vitamin D3 levels increase the calcium absorption in the bloodstream by 20 times. Also too, it decreases blood pressure. Now, vitamin D3 works with the kidney system, the aldosterone system to help regulate our blood pressure. So if you're deficient in vitamin D3, this is where you'll have uncontrolled blood pressure to possible strokes. So this is why taking an insufficient amount of vitamin D3 will help stabilize your blood pressure. Also too, it's good for your immune system. Prevents asthma. Now kids, I always, you always have to ask yourself, when are kids more prone for asthma attacks, even adults, because adults could have adult onset asthma. Is it the summertime or is it the wintertime? Most of it is the winter time because in the summertime, we're outside absorbing the sun. So you're deficient in vitamin D3. This is where the chance of having asthma attacks will increase, especially during those winter months when we're not, ex when we're not being exposed to vitamin D to the sun. Also too, bone pain. Now, the function of vitamin D3 is to increase calcium into the bloodstream by 20 times. Now, vitamin K2, works in conjunction with that to actually pull the calcium out of the blood and put it in the bone where it should go. So if you have a decrease of vitamin D, okay, this is where you'll have increased bone pain, just because you, have, you may have too much calcium in your system, but it's not being absorbed. Also too, it prevents depression. Now, seasonal affective disorder happens in the wintertime, okay? What happens in the wintertime? We're not going outside enjoying the sun. So if we don't enjoy the sun, we're not absorbing the nice, the nice vitamin D levels from the sun and we get depressed. So there's possible causes. Why are there possible causes of having a low vitamin D3 level? First and foremost, the gallbladder. Either if you have gallbladder issues or you have the gallbladder removed because vitamins A, D, E, and K, they're all fat soluble vitamins. And we need the bile from the gallbladder to help not only break down the fat, but help absorb those vitamins into our system to be utilized. So if you don't have a gallbladder, this is where you get low levels of vitamin D3. In addition to, uh, in addition to cortisol. Cortisol, the stress, cortisol is produced in the kidneys and the adrenal, I'm sorry, in the adrenal glands, which are the size of a quarter or your thumbs on top of the kidneys. And those are involved with the stress response. The main stress hormone that we have is cortisol. So when you have elevated amounts of cortisol in your system, it actually counters act, it counteracts with the absorption of vitamin D3 in your system. Also too, the winter months, seasonal affective disorder. If you're not going out in the winter um, or if you're covered up in the winter time, you're not absorbing that vitamin D3 levels. So that could be another reason why you have a deficiency. Also too, diet. You just may be on a low vitamin D3 diet, okay? That could be a cause of it. Medication, in particularly acid blockers, okay? This is the proton pump inhibitors, the Nexiums, anything that's going to, again, if you have GERD, what happens, it decreases the absorption of vitamin D3 levels because you don't have enough acid in your stomach to actually break down the nutrients for absorption once they get to the small intestines. Okay, so these could be the causes. Now, main thing involved to keep, in, to keep in, uh, in mind is that you may be getting your D3 levels tested by your medical professional. However, one most important thing is that there's two types of tests for vitamin D3. There's your inactive, inactive and there's, there's your active form. 
Now, the most common one is they test is the inactive form of vitamin D3, which is your 25-hydroxy vitamin D. That's the inactive form. What you're looking for, what I do with my patients, I test them for the active form of vitamin D3 because that's the stuff that's actually being utilized in your system. And that's, if you're vitamin deficient, this is the, one, this is the number that's typically the lowest. And this is the 125-dihydroxy vitamin D. Now, the levels vary. I always want, with my patients, I always say the higher the better. And I live in Chicagoland, so it's very, very hard to get an overdose of vitamin D3 levels. And if it does happen, I just say, okay, let's, do, let's figure out what the levels are and let's decrease the supplementation of it, okay? Now, the common question I always get asked is the dosage. How much vitamin D3 should I take in? The rule of thumb is 1,000 IUs per 25 pounds of body weight. Now, that means if you're 100 pounds, you want to take in a minimal of 4,000 IUs of vitamin D3. Now, IUs is not milligrams, okay? It's not micrograms. I use is international units, okay? It's a different type of measuring scale. But if you're 200 pounds, you want to take in 8,000 I use of vitamin D3. Now, again, this is the minimal amount. Now, keep one thing in mind, that vitamin D3 is a fat-soluble vitamin. So what that means is that if you have poor digestion of the gallbladder, if you have more adipose tissue on your body, now adipose tissue, that's the fat tissue. That actually acts as a blockade, so you actually absorb less into the system. So if you're carrying around 25 pounds of extra body, basically body fat, this is where you need to bump it up a little bit more. So just as a safety precaution, I always just recommend 10,000 IUs first thing in the morning. You know, you want to take it with food because it is fat soluble per day. So 10,000 IUs of vitamin D3 levels per, I'm sorry, vitamin D3 per day. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you in your next one.